So by the direction of the, of the Holy Spirit, God led his servant to move the church to the Spintex Road. A lot of people were very surprised at that decision because the church was doing very well where it was. And to move it here was a big challenge because this place was a wilderness. There was nothing here from the main junction all the way to um, the Spintex roundabout. There was virtually nothing except the Bank of Ghana building here. So it was a major issue. And a lot of people felt he may have missed God, meaning he didn't hear right. But he believed and he knew that God spoke specific and clearly to him to move the church. So he came in here. His father came all the way from Nigeria, Archbishop Benson in the house of blessed memory, to help him break the ground. And he planted a tree. So two trees were planted. One planted by the Archbishop Benson in Dahosa and one by the founder of the church, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. And then the work began to construct and build this thing. Initially, the sheds were built. And we used to move in here and have services in the sheds. And this was a dangerous area. There was a stream running through, but he heard from the Lord. And today, as the Lord told him, if you move the church, I will move the city to you. The whole city has moved to the Spintex Road. God has honored his word. Romans 10, 17. So keep hearing the word, continue in the word, and feed your faith, and make your faith strong, because this is the victory that will come in the world, even our faith. I've been in action for the past 36 years. I came into action in the year 1986. He is the father of the charismatic movement in Ghana. You know, when we came on the scene, I mean, when we got born again, there was nothing like that. You, you, you could hear of the uh, Pentecost Church, the Assemblies of God Church, but there was nothing like, you know, charismatism. And Papa initiated it, and since he came on the scene, I mean, it's never been the same. Yeah, we see in this picture the Archbishop with one of his precious sons, Bishop Dagwood Mills, we call him now the Mega Bishop. In those days, he used to come to the church from Achimoto School, and even at the time when he was in the University of Ghana Medical School, he still stayed in touch with the church. As a matter of fact, in the early days, he used to play the church organ, the famous red organ of the church. Many people around the world know the Archbishop as the Apostle of Strategic Prayer. Another project that is very dear to the heart of the Archbishop is his Compassion Project. So the Compassion in Action deals with the less privileged, orphans, needy communities. Having compassion without putting it in action is not enough. Through all the strength and the toughness one could really easily miss the sensitivity of his heart. He's a very sensitive, uh, tender-hearted man. And um, I think that's easy to miss because at the same time, he's very strong and he's very tough and he's like a roaring lion and that's all true. But it's also true that he has a very tender heart. He's very compassionate. You are not who you are because of the desk you sit behind, the clothes you wear, or the car you drive, or the water you drink in the pulpit, that you are who you are because of the heart that you have. God said, I'll give you pastors after my own heart, and he has done just that in you. I have found that behind that roaring lion, there is indeed a big heart, and we are so grateful for it. The drug rehab is to help a lot of these young men and women out there who are on drugs and um, can't help themselves. They become slaves of drugs. We trust that God, through the power of compassion, will uh, loose a lot of these young men and women who are like me. I saw a young man who is reaching out to God and bringing God to the nations. This has continued as his life, and it has moved into the prayer mountain, reaching out to God and bringing God to the nations. And this passion continues to reach out to the next generation.
Assemble yourself from the east, north, south, and west and be broken in pieces. Take your counsels in the regions of the sea and it shall come to naught. Speak your word against this house and it shall not stand for God is with us. Shout with a shout of triumph. I just want to say a happy birthday to him. It is my prayer that, that the good Lord will share his blessings upon him and he will never be the same. And I want to thank you especially for coming to Presec in 1979 because your coming led to the salvation of Reverend Eastwood Anaba who is now a mighty man of God today. Reverend Eastwood Anaba gives his testimony on most platforms. He got born again in his secondary school days in Presec. One of the daughters of the Archbishop, uh, Reverend now Bishop Olivia Duce, who then a student, also helped him to find his feet. And he remained with action. I mean, he will tell you his own story at the right time. But over the years, he's maintained his relationship as a son of the Archbishop. And we thank God for what he's doing across the nations of the world. Reverend Dr. Ampia Kofi, he got in contact with the Archbishop when he visited the campus at Lagos University of Ghana. I met him here when I came 41 years ago. And he was a man leading prayer, etc. His own testimony as he shares on many different platforms. The Next Generation Institute is set up to mentor, to father, to coach, to groom, to train, and to prepare potential leaders of tomorrow. This year also marks the 10th anniversary of the Nicholas Duncan Williams Ministry, a US-based nonprofit organization set up to ignite the revival of prayer with prayer summits all over the world. Here is to the honor of a general, a groundbreaker, a father of fathers, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. The two greatest things that every servant and every one of us must desire to hear above every other thing when our time on earth has expired is two things. Thou good and faithful servant come into the rest of your law. And that is the two things above every other thing I'm expecting to hear. Honoring the visionary and celebrating the vision, His Eminence, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams.